Hey guys, it's Derek again. Welcome back to WCC with another series of Deck Doctor. First of all, shout out to William Lee in Malaysia who topped with Harry for Kuala Lumpur's Bushiro Spring Fest using the Alice and Leslie combo. Today we have a Grand Blue deck submitted by one of our followers. Shout out to Ron Tan. He has pretty much given us the three criteria that we need to meet. The budget on this deck, there's no budget. The deck needs to sustain against Ezel and we want to implement the protect gift mechanic. So this is the list that we are working off today. So from the left side inwards are the cards that we're going to keep and the right side inwards are the cards that we are going to change. So I'm going to take out four Negro Breach for four King of Demonic Seas Baskirk. So going first, you can use Baskirk's effect to counter blast Soul Blast 1 to call out a Banshee to draw you an extra card or to call out Ruin Shade to start milling your deck. Additionally, we are going to take out one of these chappies for one more Skeleton Cannoneer. And also we are going to take out Captain Nightmist for an extra Ruin Shade. Ruin Shade allows for early milling of the deck to be able to set up combo pieces in the drop zone. And Skeleton Cannoneer is just a versatile card to be able to verse against Ezel. Because one of our criteria is to sustain against Ezel, Skeleton Cannoneer, when you are at high damage, when Ezel decides to high roll you, Skeleton Cannoneer can open up a lot of retires, a lot of draws to be able to sustain the hand as well as control your opponent's field. The grade ones would be the grade ones that I would run, so there's no changes there. We're gonna take out two Mick the Ghosties, as well as the Screaming Banshee, and put in an additional Rough Seas Banshee, one more Night Spirit, and put in one Mortal Mimic. The reason why I decide to put these three crits in and take out stands entirely is this deck now revolves around Skull Dragon. Now Skull Dragon's effect is after it attacks, this card retires itself. So stands are actually counterproductive in this deck. Additionally, we are putting in two extra V triggers into this lineup, which makes it really sustainable against Ezel. So if you hit one damage trigger and hit the 10k to put onto your Vanguard, it is quite useful. Rough Seas Banshee at four is pretty much a must, especially to fuel cards like Gauche. Gauche needs Soul to be able to utilize its effect to mad plus your field when you stride. Additionally, you can use that Soul and it's really important in this deck, especially against decks such as Great Nature and Mega Colony for your G-Guide. Now, what's so important about that G-Guide is that it can guard from your drop zone. We took out one Chappie because one Chappie can be used with the G-Guide to be able to mill whatever card you want. Two is a bit excessive and that space could be utilized for something more useful. The change that I'm gonna make first is taking out one Immortal Galleon and putting in one Negro Mode. Putting in Negro Mode allows you for big shield, but it's just there uh, as a flip fodder for your Negro Nora G guard. The four additional cards that we are gonna put into this G zone is four Twilight Night Rose. The importance of a Night Rose stride is very similar to how explosive Gauche is on a first stride turn with five soul. Night Rose allows you to call out multiple cards from your drop zone. This includes Skeleton Cannoneer, Rough Seas Banshee, Night Storm, and Skull Dragon. This is important because to keep up with Ezel, you must be able to control their field as well as retain hand advantage to guard throughout their upcoming turns. So let's say we are going through our first stride turn. We're going to discard a grade 3 to stride, and we're going to stride Gauche. Gash's skill, counter blast one, flip himself in the G zone, face up, and then soul blast one. Now we soul blast X amount of cards from our soul. So we're gonna soul blast five, and for every card that we soul blast additionally, we can call out that many cards from the drop zone. So let's call Cannoneer. Another Cannoneer, King Serpent, Rough Seas Banshee, and Rough Seas Banshee. 
Now, Skeleton Cannoneer can count us one, retire, and draw you an extra card. The other one can be used at the moment because we don't actually have any Counter Blast to use. So, King Serpent will use its skill to Soul Charge one, Counter Charge one, and now we can use Skeleton skill. Skeleton can count us one, retire, draw an extra card. Rusty's Banshee can go into Soul to draw your card. Rusty's again to draw an extra card. And that there, we just created a plus four advantage to our hand. Technically plus three, because we ditched one to stride for this turn. It would be more optimal to call Grenache, because then we have our Counter Blast face up at the end of turn. But let's say if we are going through a phase where we need cards in our hand, before drive check, we have already hit nine cards in hand. So a minimum of three drive checks has already given us a 12 card hand. So let's demonstrate a Megiddo turn. We're gonna discard Baskar and stride Megiddo. Megiddo skill, come us two, and then call from drop or hand five cards to the field that each gain 5,000 power. You can call them in any particular order, whatever you like, because after a battle that these units attack, they can swap with each other. Now each dragon gains 10,000 per five cards in the drop zone, as I have aligned in stacks of five, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, plus 60K. So these, are uh, 72k plus 5, so 77k each. And after each subsequent Skull Dragon attack, they'll be 2000 stronger. So let's attack 77, swapping, retiring. 79, swapping, retiring. 81, Swap and retire, 83, retire. So all four dragons are in the drop zone now. And that was four attacks with 77,000 power or more, which is ridiculous. So Megiddo will attack now. Hopefully there are still some triggers in the deck. So we're gonna drive check. One, draw a trigger. Second check, third check. So Nightstorm will now attack for 26,000. And then after battle, Kamalos 1, call a dragon back. And now, if I'm not mistaken, this is 12 plus 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, plus 60, plus 66. So this is a 78k attack. And that there is a showcase of how strong a Megiddo turn really is. That there pretty much wraps up this deck doctor profile for Ron Tan's Grand Blue deck. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Like and subscribe to our channel. We should be getting out some new content with the new Vilas Delita set coming out soon. So stay tuned. I'm Derek Dow from WCC and I'll see you guys next time.